Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. I'm going to be doing one of the last problems in this set of problems 1 through 45 in the General Curriculum Math subtest. This is all part of the Harvard Square MTEL Math Workshop series to get teachers prepared for the General Curriculum 03 and the various other MTEL Math exams. Uh, today we're going to look at number 44 on this exam. It's in the Data Analysis and Probability section. And since this is at the end of the test, um, you know, the last few problems, I should be looking out for data analysis and probability. And when I sort of take a closer look at this question, just scanning it really quickly, guess what word pops up? Probability. So let's take a moment and let's talk about probability. And then we'll read the problem. If we were uh, thinking about the probability of an event to happen, let's say I had a Let's, let's imagine I had a bowl of fruit, a nice big bowl of fruit. And in that bowl of fruit, I had a, a couple oranges, really great oranges. And maybe that bowl of fruit, I had some, you know, some plums. And then maybe I also had, uh, got some yellow bananas here. All right, so the question is, if I reach in, what is the probability that if I reach in, I'm going to pull out a plum? Well, when you think about probability, you want to think about it in terms of part to whole. And your part really, your, your part really represents all the values, all the possible outcomes. So all the outcomes, you know, it looks like if I reached in, there's eight different possibilities here, of which, if I'm just thinking about the plum, two are plums. So what's the probability if I reach in and pull out a plum, the likelihood is that it'd be two out of eight, or we could say one-fourth. Now, one-fourth, um, we could also think of as one-fourth as, you know, 25%. It's one of my core fractions. Okay. This is, this is the, the basic concept of probability. Now we're going to do link probability in this problem. So let's, let's do link probability looking at the example here. And uh, it's a little bit more advanced than, than just straight up probability. So let's just start. I'll read the problem now. Number 44. A child has a set of blocks of which four are square, five are round, and six are triangle. The child randomly picks a block from the set and gives it to his sister. The child then randomly picks one more block. What is the probability that the first block was round and the second block was triangular? Just like in that previous problem, you know, that preview problem, I'm going to um, draw a picture. So um, this represents, by the way, my bowl, my box. It represents 100% of what I have. So I have four square boxes. One, um, this child has four square. One, two, three, four. All right. Then I have a bunch of I have a bunch of round boxes or square square blocks. Pardon me. Five of them. Five circular square blocks. I guess they're not square, huh? <laughs> and then lastly, I have a bunch of triangular blocks. Let's see, and then I have six of those. All right, so now the question has two parts to it. It says the child is, is picking out these toys really quickly, so the child actually picks out two of the blocks. The first one, you know, says that the child reaches in, he grabs a toy, and the first one is round, so it's circular. Okay, so I know the first one's circular. Well, what's the probability that the first one's circular? Because this is the one that he's going to give to his sister. Well, what's my whole? I got four, right? I got four plus five plus six. Well, that's 15. Did I do that right? Yeah, that's right, 15. Of which five are circular. And I could reduce that, and I think it's always good to reduce whenever you can. Um, that 
5 over 15 could be thought of, could cross that out, cross that out, reduce it by 5. I could be thinking of that as one third. Okay, so there's a one third chance the child's going to, um, the first block that they choose is going to be a circle. Now, he gives it to his sister. This is important. He gives it to his sister. And it doesn't say anything about putting it back in the box. So we have to assume that that's no longer an, uh, one of the options. For the second one, a triangle, now we have, instead of 15 possibilities, we have 14. And you got to remember, when, the, when they don't put the option back in the box, it's, it's, uh, it changes the whole. So now we have, we have, instead of 15, we have 14 options, of which 6 could be triangles. So I can reduce, just like we did before, I can reduce the 6 and the 14. The 6 becomes a 3, the 14 becomes a 7. So let me just uh, rewrite what we have here real quick, because it's getting a little hairy. Here's my circle, 1 third. Here's my triangle, 3 over 1, uh, 3 over 7, pardon me. Now when it's linked probability, that means this event's happening, then this event. So when it's linked probability, these two events are happening, and it wants to know what's the probability that the circle will be the first. The first, think about it as the first event. So this is the first event, and this is the second event. When it's linked probability like this, we take the two probability options and we multiply them. Now I can actually cross-reduce the 3 and the 3, but let's, let's pretend we, we didn't catch that. When I'm multiplying two fractions, I always multiply the tops, so that would be 1 times 3, and the bottoms, 3 times 7. So 1 times 3 gets me 3, and 3 times 7 gets me 21. 3 over 21 can be reduced. I reduce the top and bottom by a common factor of 3, and I get 1 seventh. And if I was really good, you know, I might have said, hey, I can not only reduce this to one-third and this to two, two set, three sevenths, but I could also cross-reduce the three and the three here. So I would have gotten one-seven. So my answer here is seven over one. This is a problem, a really good problem for linked probability. The key strategies I'm recommending you to do with a problem like this is always figure out what is in your box so you get an idea um, oh there's 15 total options and I, I draw the pictures out I think you should draw it too draw out all the boxes draw out all the circles draw out all, all the triangles then you're going about um, and you have to look very closely at what, the, what it's asking if it's asking for link probability then it's asking for two events happening in a specific order that means you have to find the probability of the first event which we did one-third, and the second event we found out was um, three-sevenths. And I could reduce, but let's not reduce at the moment right now. Then, because it's linked probability, I multiply the probabilities out. If it was just something like, what is the probability that it's either going to be this or that, either or is different. Either or means I would add the one-third plus the three-sevenths. That's something different. Okay, but we're not, we're not doing that for this problem. So for, for number 44, the answer right now is C, and it uses linked probability. Okay, team, thank you very much for watching. Check out one of the Harvard Square MTEL Math workshops um, if you need uh, an overview of the exam. And if you need one-to-one -one help preparing for this exam, definitely uh, go to GoMath, go to the, web, the main website, gomath.com, and you can sign up for some one-to-one -one tutoring. Thanks a lot, team, for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.